Welcome to the D6 Family Ministry Podcast, a place where ideas, principles, and personalities come together to give you a ministry advantage that empowers the church and home. I don't know anything more important in our society or in the kingdom of God than to help the church help the family. Discipleship is not an event, it's a way of life. And one day it just hit me that discipleship at home was not about doing more. It was about inviting Christ into what we were already doing. The goal of family ministry is not families sitting on the couch, holding hands and singing Kumbaya. The ultimate goal is families that love God, love people and make disciples of all peoples. So that's why you're here. You're here to say one hour a week, as significant and as awesome as it is, we know that it's not enough and we want to be intentional with every hour. You're listening to the D6 Podcast. Here are your hosts, Marianne Howard, Ron Hunter, and Josh Wooten. Since we both love student ministry, I I think today's interview is just going to be fantastic. And I love his topic tackle. And at the beginning of the interview, they, uh, he and our inter- the interview begins with a conversation about coffee. And so I love coffee. I, we drink bean sweat at our house. That's what we call it. Bean sweat. Bean and sweat. So- I've never heard that before. <laughs> Bean oh. sweat, okay, meaning we drink it literally squeezed from the bean, and we have this bougie, bougie coffee maker, not an espresso. We use a geisha, and your wife has had coffee at my house. My friend Lauren has had coffee at my house. It It's bougie, okay, and wonderful. So he talks about an espresso. Do you have any coffee preferences? What? How do you drink your coffee, and what's your favorite? And tell us about your coffee. Passion. Oh my goodness gracious. See, my wife has a coffee passion and I know her love language is Java. And so yeah. <laughs> that is uh, one of the things that I have to, um, I make the coffee every morning. Now we have everything. We have a Keurig, we have a percolator, and we have one of those big giant bougie machines that my daughter quote bought me for my <laughs> birthday, not <laughs> understanding uh my desire to make it simple and easy. Like I like all the coffee, truck stop coffee, bougie Uh, coffee. It makes no difference to me. I just give me the juice or the bean sweat, as you would say, (laughs) you know, I'm all about easy though. So I would much rather just make it in the percolator or even a Keurig. And to be honest, I'm not sure I could tell the difference between a Keurig coffee pod and my percolator. It just stays hot longer, but Yeah, I don't put in the effort to even use that machine. I'm so sorry, listeners. Those of you that are actually coffee connoisseurs, you were very offended by Josh's words right there. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> um, I, we've gotten into craft coffee and we, my husband actually has a coffee subscription where he gets bags of coffee delivered through our mail once a month. And he's turned, we used to drink from a Keurig and he's turned me into a total bean sweat snob. Okay. And I have definite standards in how I drink my coffee, but I will say some of you are going to be offended by this, but I do drink my coffee with cream and sugar. Cream and sugar. Got to have cream and sugar. Chad drinks it black all throughout the day to the point where his kidneys are screaming. Um, you know, you know the feeling, Josh? It's like, yes, I do. I might need to drink water today. <laughs> well, I'm excited about our interview today. Mike McGarry, he is got this great podcast out there, by the way, um, that he mentions called Thanos to Theos podcast. And he's going to talk about a balance um, in your ministry with theology and uh, theology and youth ministry and, and making sure that that truth and theology is a significant part of your ministry and how you're leading your ministry. And so I'm excited about this interview. We're going to listen to the interview and then we, Josh and I are going to have a conversation on the other side. I'm going to go make a cup of coffee before I dive into this interview. See you guys (laughs) on the other side. Magnify Jesus this Easter with the new D6 Everyday Easter Adventure. Each kit includes a set of 12 devotions that prepare families to celebrate Easter with a spotlight on Jesus. Daily family activities, discussion questions, prayer suggestions, 
crafts, and recipes are included to help you extend family discipleship to everyday life. Help your family discover a joyful and refreshing understanding of the true meaning of Easter. Order your Easter adventure kit now at d6family.com. Today, I am joined by Mike McGarry. Mike McGarry is the youth pastor at South Shore Baptist Church in Massachusetts. Mike is passionate about translating sound doctrine for the next generation. He is the author of Lead Them to Jesus, a handbook for youth workers, a biblical theology of youth ministry, and he was a contributor to gospel-centered youth ministry. He is the founder of YouthPastorTheologian.com, and Mike loves his wife, kids, pets, good coffee, football, and Marvel Comics. Mike, thank for, thanks for being here today. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. So we're here. It's, uh, it's a morning time. You like good coffee. I need to know what your cup of choice is. My cup of choice lately has been from the Nespresso machine that I recently invested in, and revolutionary I bought one two weeks ago. Yes. Okay, yes. we're going to scrap what we're talking about All right. today. Yeah, let's talk Have coffee. you discovered the best capsule? Um, yeah, I forget what or it's is it called. A, I it's, ask, it's is it blue. original line? No, or is it's it... the Virtuo line. Okay, I went with the original. I wish I've... I went with the original line because I, I'm not a huge fan of the crema. Um, and yeah, so I, I wish I got the original, but don't tell my wife that. Um, Tracy, if you're listening, just ignore anything I'm saying. I'm lying. Um, except I'm not. So... <laughs> Yeah, all about the coffee, um, Nespresso, worth the investment if you like a good cup of joe. It's cheaper than going to Starbucks every day. It is, a lot cheaper. So The yeah. only downside with the original line is like you don't get much. I mean, we're talking like yeah. the one to three ounces. Yeah, you, you got to use multiples yeah. to get your cup. Um, so that's why I went with a Virtuo because it's a little bit bigger. Um but I just I find myself honestly scraping some of the crema off, which hmm. to some people is uh, tantamount little, to heresy. I, yeah, I'm, I'm not um, on board with that. But it, it you get more good shot of coffee, and that's really what we're after, isn't it? Yeah, that is true. Our listeners that either don't care or they're like so invested. <laughs> and everyone in this. is like skipping the fast fifteen button right now. And, and Nespresso, if you're listening and you want to like throw some capsules our way, <laughs> some we would be all about that. Yep, yep. Um, we'll throw out the address at the end because <laughs> those things are expensive, they so, are. Uh, it's but not, not as bad as it's Starbucks. It's not cheap, like you said. but it's more affordable than buying your coffee out. Well, my next question, since you liked Marvel Comics, we were going to jump into what you thought about Spider-Man yeah. No Way Home, but I don't think Incredible. we have time for that. Yeah, so, you probably don't. Um, we won't even jump into the multiverse, but we are going to talk about yeah. theology well, and youth ministry. So interestingly, so to make that connection, so I actually co-host a podcast called Thanos to Theos, talking about theology and comic books and youth ministry and putting those all together because teenagers love these comic book movies. And so how do we have non-Jesus jukey, but theologically informed conversations with students using comic books and comic book movies as a launch pad to talk about real content that students are engaging with, and how do we use that to lead them to Jesus? You know, I've had people recommend yeah. your podcast to me who yeah, had no idea about the connection here yeah, at all. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's so fun. So today I'm talking to a cool youth pastor. Some of you will get that reference, some of you <laughs> won't. Uh, but we're talking about the role of theology in youth ministry. Um, I got to say, the, the terms theology and youth ministry haven't always gone hand in hand. Yeah, that's true. Looking back at how youth ministry operated in the past, why do you think it was so light in theology? Um, I think one of the reasons is with a good motivation, we just want to focus on Jesus. We just want to, you know, boil things down and, you know, love God and love people and keep it simple. And, you know, I don't want theology to get in the way of how I'm making disciples. And theology just leads to arguments and disagreements and doctrine divides and these types of things that we hear. Um, but it's led to this really boiled down. Uh, some people say it's boiled down and condensed. Others say it's watered down. Um, I think it's probably somewhere in the middle. Um, but there's just not much room for theological engagement um, if what you're really focused on is always keeping it simple, 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 so much that you've simplified too much with a good intent. Um, and then... If it's not practical, we won't teach it. Well, 
some really important doctrines like Christology and the Trinity are essential to what it means to be a Christian, but they're not the most practical of doctrines until you drill down and understand how practical they are. But on the surface, they're not super practical, so we haven't taught them. And then we were graduating and sending out students who have learned a lot of practical things in their churches and in their youth ministries and at family discipleship, Um, but they haven't really learned much critical theology for what it actually means to be a Christian. And then they walk away from their faith. And in large part, I think that's because they've never really understood what it means to be a Christian in the first place. Yeah, and you mentioned that walking away from the faith aspect of things, uh, which is unfortunate. And so it kind of brings up this next question. I know this sounds so obvious, but I think it's something we need to discuss and talk about, not just here, but even in our churches. And that is, why is it so important that our youth ministries are saturated with strong theological teaching? Well, yeah, I mean, what we want, if we're trying to make disciples and we don't want to talk about theology, then we don't really want to make disciples, yeah. right? I mean, it's just what, what is the gospel, that's a theological question. I mean, that's that's an evangelistic question. That's a discipleship question. Um, how do we how do we help students understand issues of apologetics, uh, the exclusivity of the gospel? Um, how do we help students who are wrestling with their gender and sexual identities nowadays, and with their friends who are struggling with mental health, or our students who are struggling with mental? Like these are all theologically informed questions and issues. And I think we're doing them and ourselves a great disservice by overlooking the foundational role that our our theology and doctrine plays in having those really practical pastoral parenting conversations. Yeah, and on that side of practicality, how can our theology or how can theology be implemented in youth ministry so that it is practical, it is beneficial, yeah. but also make sure it doesn't just fly over the heads of students or bore them to death where they're not even paying attention? Yeah, yeah, well, that's a great question. So one of the things I like to say is the gospel is not just a good idea. And I think sometimes we talk about the gospel like it's a good idea. You know, so, um, you know, Jesus died for sinners that were saved by, by faith. Uh, we're, we're saved by grace through faith. And, and, and we preach this, and we preach this, and we preach this, but the culture of our ministry, the culture of our homes kind of makes it seem like um, God's grace is just a good idea, because if I step out of line, then I get disciplined. Um, if I'm not performing well, then I'm not as loved or praised. Um, and I think sometimes in an attempt to counteract the whole every kid gets a trophy um, thing going on in our culture, sometimes then we we only reward good behavior. Um, and how do we respond when our kids break the rules, when our kids are just really disrespectful, and um, what, even when they intentionally go around our backs and are just outright disobedient? Is grace just a good idea? Or are we actually showing them and giving them grace um, so that we're embracing the idea that sin has consequences, right? That that God doesn't just ignore sin and pretend that it never happened. Um, God cares so much about sin that it costs God the Son his very life on the cross. Uh, But that God gives grace to sinners and calls them as his children, And um, how do we embrace that same theological understanding of what the gospel is, of the nature of sin, the consequences of sin, but also the high value and priority of of God's grace for us in Christ? How do we embody that in our parenting and in our youth ministries, in our discipleship? Uh, Those are theological foundations of the gospel very practically playing out and the way that we're interacting with the children and teenagers in our lives. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break while Mike and I nerd out a little bit. Uh, We will be right back, and we're going to keep talking about this. Registration for D6 2023 is now open. 
For a limited time, you can take advantage of the absolute best pricing for the D6 conference if you register now. The earlier you register, the more you save. Last year's conference sold out, so don't wait long to take advantage of this offer. Join us for the 2023 D6 conference, April 10th to 12th at the Marriott World Center in Orlando, Florida. This year's theme is All In, All Your Heart, All Your Soul, All Your Strength. Register now at d6conference.com. We're back and we're talking to Mike McGarry, and we're talking about the role of theology in youth ministry. Now, Mike, I've seen some youth, youth ministries that operate like a seminary, where yeah. it's all seriousness and just like no fun. We yeah. are not going to have fun, yeah. period. Yeah, yeah. Don't you dare smile or laugh. <laughs> I, I, not, one's coming to mind. Um, I've also seen others, though, that they're just all fun with no substance. It's kind of like, yeah, we're going to we're gonna make this like extended daycare, but yeah. that's, that's it. How can we find a good balance between strong theological teaching and also the fun games and events that kind of get thrown on a schedule? Yeah, no, that, I think that's a really important question. And frankly, it's become one of my hobby horses um, is just a, a theological understanding of fun and games and recreation, I think is really important. I mean, God created the world. Uh, it, it, you just look back in, in Genesis uh, 1 and 2, the Garden of Eden was full of life and joy, and God told Adam and Eve to go eat and enjoy the fruit of every tree in the garden um, to cultivate the ground, that God created recreation, God created fun, uh, that um, it's, it's a good thing to enjoy this life and this world that God made. Uh, and so, it's not a bad thing to play games in youth group. If you're playing games in youth group because that's what you have to do to get kids to come, that's the problem Mm. because then you're winning them with fun and games. I mean, it's the old cliche, um, what you win them with is what you win them to. So if you're winning them with fun and games, then you're winning them to fun and games and you just have to keep upping and upping and upping your fun and games each week. Otherwise you're losing them. Um, but if we're using fun and games with a theological foundation, um, then we're using fun and games to enjoy um, and embrace joy in this good world that God made. Uh, we're cultivating friendships with one another. I mean, I know that at least in my youth group, we have kids who go to a bunch of different schools, and what do they call them each other? They call each other rivals, right? I mean, I compete against your school, and you compete against that school. And then they come to youth group and they're supposed to be friends and they're supposed to be one unified group. And so you use fun and games to tear down those walls so that students from different grades of different genders from different competing schools are now playing together. They're not competing against each other. They're playing together uh, to tear down the walls because it's really hard to love someone you can't laugh with. And so if your youth group never laughs together, and if you can't play together, how are they supposed to love one another, right? Like if you can't, if you can't throw a dodgeball at someone, how are you supposed to pray for them in prayer circle? (laughs) Yeah. And I'm glad you've, you've talked about this because I've been in churches where there was that idea that like, no fun, like we, we should not laugh. We should not have fun. It is all seriousness. I've seen the other extreme where the success of youth ministry was based on how many events were on the calendar. Yeah. Um, and when I say events, I'm not talking about like theological events. I'm talking about like <laughs> fun. Yeah. 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 And and so and both of those extremes felt wrong mm-hmm. and felt awkward and they weren't profitable. And so what you've just said, I think, and it's a tough tension and tough balance to yeah. manage, but that is so important. Um, now, I want to talk to you about the leaders who are in charge of this, because some leaders are hesitant to get too deep into theological teaching because they haven't had that training themselves. Right. And you know, they say you can't teach what you don't know yourself. Yeah. What advice would you offer to them? Um, yeah, I mean, it's... It is this reality, and, and I, I would even take it to the the leaders who do have theological training. Sometimes the training that we receive in in school and seminary is really hard to translate to the youth room. Um, so I don't think it's just the the youth workers who are listening in saying, "But I've never been to seminary. I don't have the benefit of formal theological education." Even a lot of those who who have received that have a really difficult time making that jump and transition. 
Um, but I just want to say that that you can do it. You can have these conversations. Um, don't stretch into conversations that you aren't, you aren't prepared to have. Uh, so start slow and uh, ask for help. If there are other people in your church who are well-equipped and well-prepared to engage and dive into issues and topics and questions that maybe you're not ready to teach on, then have them come and be a guest teacher in the youth ministry, um, whether it's for one week or for a two- or three-week session. Uh, but there, there are resources available in your church, uh, most likely, uh, w- that you can use and leverage, and that's not a, a shame against you. It's not, it doesn't need to be an, in, an insecurity breeding. Well, like, but then I'm just admitting my, my failures or my weakness or my inability. No, 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 no. You're using the body of Christ uh, to minister to the students in your ministry and to the children that you're entrusted with. And that's really, as the church family, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Um, I, I'd also say, uh, sales pitch coming, that this is why I launched Youth Pastor Theologian. Uh, and so it's a website that we're just launching a new podcast, actually, uh, and talking about how do we practice theology in youth ministry, because generally speaking, the pastors on staff who have the least amount of formal education are, are usually the children's and youth pastors. Mm. And so how do we provide some resources and talking about theological engagement in student ministries? And so uh, we're, we're pulling together articles from uh, a wide array of, of youth workers and uh, trying to help with theological reflection about what youth ministry is and about how do we teach these important qu- questions and topics to students. Yeah, very good. That's 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 really awesome. I almost thought you were leading to with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> I thought we might go there, but um, but that is that is really good because I know so many they suffer with that, and yeah. and also parents are kind of in that same boat too because parents they want to be the spiritual leaders, but sometimes they don't yeah. know how. So, what role can parents play in this when it comes to instilling that theology and that theological teaching in their kids? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the best things that we can do as parents is to ask questions to get our kids thinking. Um, so I'm, I'm a youth pastor. I'm also a dad. Um, my my son is 14. My daughter is 12, uh, 11, almost 12. And um, yeah, I just try to ask a lot of questions and have just normal conversations with them about what's going on in our world, what's going on in their lives and in their friends' lives, and what do you think? It's always a great question to ask is, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think about that? What do you think about this? Um, and just to see what what your kids are, how are your kids making sense of the world around them? And I, I think that there's there's a difference between teaching theology and teaching theologically. Mm. And... I'm a big fan of teaching theology. I think that's important and essential to a certain degree, but I think it's it's even more important to teach and to parent theologically. So we're helping our, our kids, whether we're parents at home or whether or not they're, we're youth pastors at church, to to engage our students' minds and worldviews to help them to to grow and to think theology and to think theologically uh, just about their child's and adolescent worldviews and how do they make sense of the world and struggles and bullying and what they're learning at school and friendships and all of, all of that. Because our kids, it's hard to be a kid. It's hard to be a teenager. Yeah. And, um, yeah, there, there's some real depth that our kids are, are working through and navigating that we might not realize unless we're asking questions and giving them space to really think about um, and lean into those conversations with them. Well, Mike, I appreciate you being here. This has been so rich. Uh, this is so needed in the church. This is 
been needed for a long time, and we've neglected it some. Yeah. And I'm so glad that you're talking about this because we need it. Um, and I also I hope we can do this again. I, I would love to talk to you about kind of going to your other podcast a little bit. Yeah, that'd be great. And talking even how the overlap between you know theology and and culture. I'm thinking yes. even with with Disney exploding, with Disney Plus exploding, yeah. and all the new series that people are just lined up to wait. Please don't spoil Moon Knight for me. Um, <laughs> I, I just I would love to hear you know more about how we can use discernment and wisdom and process that through a biblical worldview. So th- yeah. maybe that'll be another time. Hopefully, that'd be we great. Can do this I would again. love that. But this is so great. Thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is wonderful. There is nothing more than I love than than youth ministry, family ministry. But I love the creativity Mike has um, and connecting and bringing things that uh, students are drawn to and utilizing that to spread the gospel and to disciple. Because as he said, the gospel is not just a good idea. You know, um, we get the wrong idea thinking when, you know, if we're like, oh, it's all about my performance and I'm not loved or praised when I'm performing, but it's not about us. It's about yeah. Jesus and what he did. And he, he makes it very simple and breaks breaks it down on a level where the, the kids can understand and connect the two worlds that they love, the Marvel universe and, and the real world right. and our eternal uh, home. That's right. I think it was important for me as I was listening to this interview, I needed to think through what is theology. So I thought I would define theology really quick for our listeners, just to kind of bring some connectivity to what he's talking about. Theology is the study of the nature of God and it shapes our worldview. So as we're raising the next generation, um, the current generation um, through God's word and understanding and loving God, we want to, we want to help shape the way that they're viewing the world through the proper lens and that they're seeing the world through the lens of God made the world and everything in it. And we want them to understand and see that I loved. And I, I don't know if you remember this part in the, the interview where he started talking about the balance between biblical theology, apologetics and games. And yes. when he got into the practicality of do games, have games, but have purpose with your games and how games can tear down ministry walls. And I, I know how you lead Josh and your ministry and, um, I, what did you think about that, about the balance of theology, but then purpose with your games? I love it because you have to have fun. You brought an important part. You have to have fun with youth ministry. You have to realize who your audience is. And it's not getting any easier with the entertainment and with TikTok. And they just taking little bits of context, con, uh, content at 15, 30 seconds of, you know, yeah. all this fun stuff. But when we engage them with fun, um, we can get their attention and then dive deep. But there has to be that connectivity like you talked about, you know, because ultimately, you know, you can have all the fun in the world, but we have to utilize that opportunity and strike while the iron's hot, while we have them there. Once we have the fun and get them uh, drawn in, speak truth, you know, and and truth yeah. even about the consequences of their sin, but also God's grace. And because, you know, you can concentrate too much on fun And that's why they're coming. Like you said, what you win them with is what you win them to. That's right. That's right. I love that. One of the things that our student ministry has is shifting a little bit in how we're presenting truth is we're really putting a high valuation, a high value on discovery. And so we're teaching with the idea and the mind of we want to help teenagers discover. That's a whole different teaching way to teach theology and and way to marry those two whole ideas of theology and games and just kind of making that balance there. And we're, we're praying because we want our students to discover truth for themselves. This generation, they've got to own it for themselves. And so I really love, I was challenged with Mike and his thoughts and his perspective on uh, valuing theology and ministry and, and then thinking about discovery and watching teenagers have that aha moment of, oh my goodness, that's how that applies to this, or that's how that applies to this. Or I think this would apply in this situation where they're discovering it and not just listening to talking heads (laughs) about what the Bible says, but they're discovering it for themselves. And they're watching these movies under a new lens, you know, like we had C.S. Lewis with the lion with Narnia and, and all of the 
the theological and biblical tie-ins there. And, and I love how he's getting them to view these new movies and how theology and comic books can go together sometimes. That's right. That's right. Well, I'm excited about our conversation next week. We're going to be talking with Rachel Timothy, and you are not going to want to miss this interview. And uh, we are praying for you and pray that you walk away today challenged to evaluate um the, the balance in your ministry between fun and theology and apologetics and just making sure there's a balance there. We hope you have a great week and we will see you next week. You've been listening to the D6 podcast. You can learn more about D6 at d6family.com. 